One of the questions I get asked a lot is, what is my favorite distro? And it's actually a fairly difficult question to answer because I try a ton of distros out, mainly for the channel. And settling on one over the last five years has been kind of difficult because I'm very much a uh, grass is always greener on the other side kind of guy. I really do always kind of think that I'm missing out on something if I haven't tried it out or haven't tried it out recently. So I tend to destro hop a lot. And while that has toned down over the last year and a half, it's still sometimes the case. I will eventually always get that itch to move on to something else. Even if my system is working like perfectly, like chef's kiss perfectly. Like it's just, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong. If I have that itch to distro hop, I'm going to do it. Like it doesn't matter. So answering the question of what's my favorite distro is kind of hard. But if I was forced to answer, I would actually have two answers because of course I do. I can't just choose one. That would be against the rules. Or maybe it is supposed to be against the rules. I don't know. The point is, is that I have two favorite distros and I use them both every day and at least so far they're the ones that I continually come back to despite my occasional urge to distro hop I usually use whatever I have that urge to do like I, I'll go use Debian or I'll go use Fedora or whatever but I always return to these two so on this main computer I have two hard drives one is the one that I use every day. It's the NVMe, it's the fastest storage, has the most storage, all that stuff. It's fantastic, right? And on that hard drive, I have Arco Linux. Now, everyone pretty much knows my love-hate affair with Arco Linux. I think it's fantastic, and I really wish that I could recommend it to everybody. Like, I really, truly do wish that Arco was amazing, and I could tell everyone you should go use Arco Linux, just go do it. Unfortunately, I can't do that because the website and the number of ISOs and the confusion over the learning path and the the 4,000 videos that are on the YouTube channel and all this stuff, it just makes it so hard to actually get into that I can't really recommend it, despite how good it is. So Arco Linux is, my prob is probably my favorite primary distribution, despite the fact that I can't recommend it to other people. My other distro that I like a lot and it'd probably be my only distro is MX Linux. MX is my favorite because there's just this feeling that the developers behind MX Linux truly are in love with their own distribution. Like they truly put a lot of passion into making their distribution work just really well and they just it feels like they put a lot of heart into it. Now that's a, a very superfluous reason to like a distribution, but just the fact that it has, they have gone to the trouble of making all of these tools that make MX Linux work really well, just kind of has always blown my mind. And it's not that they've like, like some of the tools they've had to make, right? There's the, the jobs tool that takes place of like Crony or something like that. And the reason why they've had to create that is because they're not on system D. So most of the cron job helpers won't work. So they had to create their own. Some of those tools, I really don't see, like I don't use them because like I would prefer something else. Like I would prefer something that would work with system D because I want system D. That's one of the reasons why I can't use MX, you know, daily is because getting system D to work on it is kind of a hack. But the point is, is that the, they have other tools that are just amazing, like the ISO making tool and the snapshot, the, I think that's the snapshot tool. And it, you can just kind of tell that these tools are something that they use themselves. So they're constantly updated and they're just really good, right? So those are my two distros. And I mentioned it briefly, but the reason why MX Linux isn't the main one is simply because system D is not default, right? You can use system D on MX Linux. I completely understand that, but getting it to work is not the greatest. And even once you do get it to work, you can kind of just tell that it's not meant to be there, right? You can, like the, the main points of using MX Linux is because you want to use the tools and a lot of the tools are pointless without, without using the default init system. 
So moving to system D just makes you kind of feel like you're just using Debian. And at that point, you might as well just use Debian because, you know, the MX Linux tools are the things that make M MX Linux special. So it's kind of a convoluted mess. So I use MX Linux on that computer back there behind me on my standing desk. And I, I don't plan on moving it like ever. I've come to really love the stability of a Debian base on that computer because I don't update it nearly as much. Like that computer is always on because it acts as a file server, similar to this one actually, now that I think about it. But the, the point is, is that I don't want to have to update that very often because I just don't remember it. Like this one here, I remember I'm going to update every four days. I've gotten to that habit. That one there, I update once a month, maybe if I remember and the, the greatest thing about having a Debian base is, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Like, things aren't going to break if you don't forget to, if you don't remember to update. So, those are my two favorite Linux distributions. Like I said at the beginning, they're liable to change. Like, there's a good chance that in a year, my answer will be completely different. Like, I like trying out new things, and if I find something that is, you know, cool, I might go use that for a while. So, for example, there's a couple... Linux issues that I'm going to be looking at here in a few days. Uh, one zero Linux X E R O Linux, and the other one is A V Linux. I think it's called. That's an actually an M X fork that's supposed to be for creators. So those are going to be uh, really interesting to look at. Maybe one of those will catch my fancy, and they'll be my new daily driver. Who knows? The point is, is that that stuff kind of changes. If I were to give advice to anyone who is just switching to Linux, I would give two pieces of advice. The first one is, and they're kind of contradictory to each other. So the first one is use every distro you want to use. So I think every single Linux user, when they've switched to Linux, goes through the period of distro hopping, where they just move from distro to distro to distro willy-nilly, and they try them all. Go through that phase. Everyone does it. It's kind of like a rite of passage. You know, you want to try them all. The second piece of advice is that distros don't matter, matter. So it kind of negates the first piece of advice, but it doesn't really, because I think that everyone should go through that path of trying out the main distros. But I think that the reason why you go through that experience is because eventually you need to get it into your head that the distros really don't matter. The things that are important about Linux when you finally settle into a distro of your own are the package manager and the desktop environment slash window manager. And the thing that you'll learn is that the only thing that is truly stuck to your distro is the package manager. So if you want Pac-Man, you have to use Arch or an Arch-based distro. If you want Apt, you have to use a Debian or an Ubuntu-based distro. So once you've settled on a package manager that you enjoy, that you like using, you've pretty much narrowed it down to those things, right? You're going to be stuck on those types of distros. Now, there are obviously movement within those spheres so you can move from Arco to Endeavor to Groot or whatever if you like Pac-Man uh, but for the most part you're going to be using Arch because that's your your package manager the desktop environments they can move moved around you can use Mate on Ubuntu you can use Mate on Linux Mint you can use Mate on Debian MX Linux Arch Fedora Gentoo whatever you want you can install Mate on it and that goes for everything. Any window manager, desktop environment, that can be installed on anything. It doesn't really matter how it looks or feels. So someone left a comment on one of my videos recently about how they really liked MX Linux, but they thought it was the ugliest distribution ever. And what I wanted to comment back was, why didn't you just change the theme? Like, that's the thing about Linux is that that's the thing. That's probably the number one thing that I had a problem with when I first started using Linux is that I thought that the look and feel represented the distro. So when I moved to a distro and it, it didn't really suit my fancy in terms of look and feel and functionality, I moved on. But one of the things that you really should kind of understand is that that look and feel is not set in stone. You can install, like, take K KDE Plasma, for example. Every single distro, for the most part, has a KDE spin of some kind, unless you're Linux Mint, in which case you got rid of it, and, and you know, they don't want to talk about that anymore. But for the most part, every distro has some kind of KDE spin. And for the most part as well, most of them look different in some form or fashion. They have some similarities. Maybe they look, they use just the stock KDE you know, bar and panel and whatever stuff. 
and it looks the same, but a lot of them will look really different. Some of them will be like Garuda and look way different. They'll like be completely out of left field. The, the point is, is that all those, they're all KD Plasma, right? You can choose Garuda, and even if you don't like the Garuda look, which I don't happen to like the Garuda look, you can still use Garuda and just change the look. And that's something that a lot of new Linux users don't really realize, is that that look is not set in stone. It's something that you can change. And this, it's one of the hardest parts that I had as well. Like, for example, I don't like the default Arco Linux look. I don't care for Arc, the Arc theme. And that's their default theme. So I always change it. So that's the thing that I think a lot of people need to realize is that the dis desktop environment window manager doesn't really matter. Choose a package manager, and that's what I've basically done. So in order to choose my favorite distro, there are two package managers that I prefer. I like Pac-Man a lot. I like Apt a lot for different reasons. I like the stability of systems that use Apt as a package manager. There are a lot of things I don't like about Apt too, but really, I like th that the underlying repositories of a Debian-based distro are less turbulent in terms of latest features than the Arch-based re repos are. On the other hand, I enjoy Pac-Man and I enjoy using the Arch repos. So those are the things that I've kind of settled on. This is the reason why I have two favorite you know, distros is because I like them both. For most people, they'll choose one and that's where they'll stick. So, so bottom line is that when someone asks me what my favorite distro is, those are my answers, but I always have like a asterisk in the, in the top point of my answer. And that is that they're liable to change. And for the most part, what my favorite distro is doesn't really matter to you at all because I think everyone should take that path of using as many of the distros as they want, find the package manager and repository system that works for them the best, that they enjoy the most, and settle there. That's how Linux is supposed to work and I think that that's the path that the vast majority of people take. They use a whole bunch of them, choose a package manager, and then they can mess around with the window manager or the desktop environment all they want and just stay there. You know, uh, That's probably the best for most people and that's how I ended up working so that's the reason why I use Argo on this one and I have for you know quite a long time it's why MX sticks on that one for has been has been stuck on that one for quite a long time and I'm happy with that so that is it for this video a bit of a ramble I had the worst time coming up with a topic for today like I did not have any interest in doing anything in terms of like a distro review or an app review. I just, I, I had no interest in it whatsoever. So I decided to do a ramble. I probably should have just streamed this. It probably would have been better. But anyways, it doesn't matter. If you want to get in contact with me, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We just went over 11,000 subscribers, which is just mind blown. I, I, I say that every time I hit a milestone, but it just continually, continuously surprises me that the subscriber count keeps going up. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'd like to thank my current patrons, Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Iphone Tools, Steve A, Cybrick Linux, Derek, Samuel, KB, TGB, Keith, Andy, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E, Roth, Eduardo, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Benefits, Primus, and PM. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.